Hello everyone, welcome to this next session on Anubhav Learning series. In this session, we will discuss about common issue which we facing during deploying our web as application to SAP Gateway Server. So what we have done by far, we've created a simple Fury application in SAP Web IDE full stack. And now we try to deploy this application to our SAP Gateway system. After deploying this application, we have also embedded this application as a tile on SAP Fury Launchpad. And now the application is currently working fine with local web IDE. But when I go to Fury Launchpad and try to access the application from the tile, it gives us a, a kind of a weird error. So let's investigate and find out what is the root cause of this and how can we solve the issue. So first we'll switch to the web IDE and I'll show you that on the web IDE we have this Fury application and we have all the required files including component JS, router, root match handler, routing configuration, our index HTML file and the complete default project structure which is expected to be in a standard gold standard Fury application. We have all this stuff. And when I just run this application locally, you can see it's just loading all the product data properly. This all looks okay. But when I just deploy the application to the Fury Launchpad and on the tile, when I click, I'm getting an error. As I click here, you can see. So let's investigate what's going wrong. Usually what we do is for troubleshooting, we always go to Internet Developer Tools, press F12 on your keyboard. and Maybe now you see what went wrong. And it's a very little clue at times you get it with these kind of issues and it says that uh, the default binding mode is undefined. So this is something uh, which is not very straightforward. You could guess probably, but you just have to, you know, get more and more hands on on SAP UI5. Now, if you are quite new to SAP UI5 or maybe uh, just started your career, maybe like half a year or one year in UI5, but is still struggling to find the correct way of understanding and troubleshooting and finding the root cause of the issue, my strong recommendation is to stop doing copy paste. Because if you are doing a copy paste of code, you are actually some using somebody else's knowledge. And now you don't know the intention with which that code has been put on the internet by somebody else. And if you just directly copy pasting it, it's, it's very dangerous for you because you may stuck into production issues which which probably you will not be able to fix and then you are really in a big trouble for your end user. So what is the right approach? The right approach is build every single line of code and that's where I strongly recommend to subscribe our courses on SAP UI 5 and Fury with Odata service on onlinefurytrainings.com. We make sure that we cover each and every concept with a line by line writing every single line of code without even copy pasting any line of code. And this is what is the major difference you find in industry trainers and, and us. We will never copy paste any piece of code. And this is what is also written as a first line or website. We make sure that every student get the hands on on SAP UI5 concepts, the concepts like views, uh, concepts like fragments, formatters, component JS, manifest JSON, router, root match handler, writing the manifest every single line, line by line, every single line of code, explaining you the meaning of that code, what's going on behind the scene, what happens when you do in this way, what are the best practices, what are the gold standards, and what are the new techniques to improve or write a code which is which is performance improved. Yeah, all these uh, all these concepts like scaffolding, control, uh, control uh, hierarchies, control uh, libraries, all these things we map it properly and that's how we develop everything from scratch, from the very basic. And you don't need to know anything. If you are an ABAP developer, you have, you're skeptical about JavaScript, so don't panic. We also cover JavaScript as part of our course. So if you're a fresher, you can actually subscribe this course and without any know-how of anything, you can actually attend and learn these things. So let's move on back and now you see here we have some issues. So let's try to investigate what could have gone wrong. So definitely the binding mode is something which is related to models. So that's the reason we will go to manifest JSON and probably check it out if there's something wrong with our models. So I'm going to come down to models. And now you see here we have three models defined. 
The first one is a OData binding, OData model. The second one is a local JSON model, which also looks pretty okay to me, but then there is a problem probably with this one. You can see the type is mentioned as a resource model, but we are missing here the resource bundle URL which is where is the address from where the resource model should take all the resources or the IETN. So that's one thing. And another thing is this at the rate of symbol is kind of looking very tricky. So maybe just going to remove that. And now we will put here the settings for this. Of course, it should be mentioned in the small letters. That's a standard practice. And then we will just mention the bundle URL for IETN. By the way, IETN model, as we have already talked about it in our course, I'm not discussing it here in detail because this is something which I assume you already aware of. If you are not, you know what you what should be the right way. You have to subscribe for the training and then get these things learned from the scratch. Of course, I am not covering in this short video about what is a model, what are the binding modes, binding types, um, different types and varieties of bindings in SAP UI5, how to write a manifest. All these things are covered actually in the course. I'm not just, my main focus is to just solve the issue here for the for the launch pad. So now I say bundle URL. And just going to put the address for where exactly in my project this uh, this bundle URL is found. So usually we put the path. So in this case, my namespace is ibm.fin.ar. That's my namespace. And then I'll say i18n.i18n. Just save this up. So that becomes my i18n. And I'm just going to go up also, just to specify the settings for i18n on the top. So we will specify that, hey, my i18n refers to my directory where uh, where my i18n files are so it's I, the bundle is in i18n folder i18n dot properties save this up so let's go back and now re try to deploy this application so how does the system know that uh, with what name the application is already deployed right Quite interesting, right? So what exactly happens when you deploy your app for the first time? System actually makes an entry into this file manifest JSON. Automatically, you will see an entry at the bottom. It adds an entry called SAP platform ABAP, and then it puts the the, the project URL basically in the system. You see ZZoon, our app. This is the name of the, uh, the app, BSP app, which has been deployed into my ABAP repository corresponding to my project, my first Fury app. So that's what has happened. And you can see the version also is this one. And I'm just going to right click and say redeploy, please. Deploy to above repository. I have everything pre-configured here. And of course, this is something which you can learn also as part of my training. I'm not covering, again, I'm repeating, I'm not covering a basic here. I assume that you are aware of these things and that's just, you, you are here for this video to just watch what exactly uh, is the issue and how to solve that issue. That is our focus in this particular video. Okay, let's move on. It picks up the right app name and say finish. And now it's just system is giving me an information about that I'm going to deploy these files. Okay, I'm fine. Please go ahead. And you see the deployment to my S4 on a server has been started. Done, superb. Let's go back and just go into, uh, it's running in local fine, but the problem was with the launch pad. And I'm just going to kind of refresh my SAP Fury launch pad so that we get now the newer version uh, of the application accessible. And we just go back to our group, which we created for Fury launch pad. And in that group, we have the tile. So that's anubavjuneonlinefurytrainings.com. And I just click on our app. And oops, it's still it's not loading. So there's something wrong. Maybe uh, we got to we missed out something. So let's go and check it out. What is what would have gone wrong? So to investigate once again, maybe we just right click and say inspect. Please show me what would have gone wrong probably. And now we can just go back. So these kind of issues may come while you are working, while we are deploying the app with IETN. So now you say it says, okay, error in resource URL. So it's a different error. Last time we were getting an error called binding mode, but now it's a different one. And it says has unknown type, all right? So it is having some unknown type 
called bundle URL. So there's something related to URL, bundle URL, which we have given this setting. So it's enabled to load that manifest again. So the probable reason could be we have made a mistake. Yes, exactly. Uh, it should not be bundle URL rather than it should be bundle name. I'm going to save this up, right click once again and try to deploy. So this is the mistake which I've done intentionally to show you that these kind of issues may come when you do typos or when you mention the wrong properties which are not compliant with the with the, the format for manifest. So I'm just going to redeploy our application and you see once again all of these files and artifacts will be overwritten. Once again the deployment is in process and once our deployment is over, yes that's all done let's go back and of course go to the launch pad let's press f12 a uh, good practice is to also clear the cache and reload the launch pad from scratch so how to do that press f12 right click and say empty cache and hard reload so that it reloads the metadata for the launch pad and also the application registry accordingly um, so now we will see it has reloaded the launch pad quite fast and maybe just going to Go to our group once again and just come down click here and watch out let's click on the app voila there you go you can see the app is now up and running so this is how you solve your launchpad issue i hope you enjoyed this video feel free to share your comments what kind of issues you are facing in the fury launchpad Feel free to let me know what are all the issues you face while working with your app in the Fury Launchpad and how did you solve it. So it will help also others. If you want me to create more videos like this for troubleshooting the Fury Launchpad and also fixing the issues related to your app, do let me know in the comment box. I will also put the link into the description of this video for the source code which I was showing you here. You can download this source code and try to deploy this app yourself in your own S4 HANA system. And feel free to subscribe to our trainings on ABAP on HANA, S4 HANA, Fury Launchpad, Fury Security, S4 HANA Technicals, S4 HANA Cloud, uh, Extensions, uh, SAP Cloud Platform, Native Cloud Platform Development, HANA Access, HANA Access Advance, uh, Workflows, Object Oriented ABAP for Architects, WebDean Pro, any of these courses which you need, this is one stop shop for all your technical learning. With that, thank you so much once again. Hope to see you again in the next video. Have a nice day. Goodbye.